Uh, so I'm uh, Carl Tobo, I'm um, Director and Chief Curator of uh, MOMU, um, Antwerp's Fashion Museum. I started, um, I think, 20 years ago, uh, in 2001. I started as uh, MOMU's Exhibition Curator and in um, 2008 I took over as um, Director from our, our then Director Linda Loppa. Um, so yeah, already, already 20 years. Um, I was there when the museum opened uh, its doors on this location. Um, that was um, uh, yeah, end of the 90s, the renovation of the building started and in 2002 uh, the museum opened um, uh, on this location. Um, at that time the renovation was done by um, a Belgian architect based in Ghent, uh, Marie-José Marie van He. Um, and uh, the museum was yeah, relocated to um, um, the historical city center of, of Antwerp and I think that was um, an important decision by the, um, 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 the city of Antwerp to, to relocate um, the museum. Um, before that time the museum was actually not a fashion museum but a costume and textiles uh, museum located um, at the outskirts of, of Antwerp. Um, and I think the decision to relocate the museum and to appoint a new director at that time that was um, Linda Lopa um, really was part of, of um, sort of renewed city marketing strategy of, of Antwerp and to focus more on, on contemporary fashion. Um, at that time um, there was already um, um, uh, one decade, the 90s, um, where Antwerp fashion had been um, really uh, um, had been really very successful um, uh, on an international um, um, scale. So I think that the, the the city of Antwerp wanted to um, um, come with an answer uh, or, or with a, a, a reaction to that um, international um, success. So now, um, yeah, 15 years later, um, the museum needed a new um, renovation. We really needed to update our um, infrastructure, um, both um, our storage facilities and our exhibition um, facilities. So that's why we closed um, in 2018. Yeah. We closed our doors for a renovation period of about um, three and a half years, a bit longer than originally planned, but that, of course, had to do a lot with um, um, yeah, the pandemic we're we're still we're still in, uh, but very happy we could we could reopen um, this this September. Uh, we added a new um, exhibition space, a third exhibition space, for the presentation of our collection. Before that time, we worked with um, uh, temporary exhibitions, but that also meant that we had to um, close um, during installation uh, periods in between exhibitions. But on a yearly basis, that was uh, almost three months, which is <laughs> quite a long, a quite a long time. And I think we were also ready to to present our um, collection um, for um, uh, clothing for fashion that's not really um, very self-evident because you need to rotate the objects um, 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 uh, quite um, yeah um, uh, quickly. Yeah, you can leave them on on display for a number of months. Um, so we, we, we prepared an exhibition, but actually we've been preparing three exhibitions because we already know how to rotate the, ex uh, the, the objects between, uh, um, uh, within um, uh, the presentation we have, we have on um, now. So it was very labor intensive to prepare that. Um, with the collection presentation, we also um, bring the, the, the story of um, Belgian avant-garde um, fashion and its, its evolution from the end of the 80s up, up to now. And we also um, question a bit the notion of, of Belgian fashion. What is Belgian fashion? Knowing that the past three decades we went through an extreme globalization that also had an effect on that notion of Belgian fashion. We see that, for example, students graduating in the fashion department of the Antwerp Academy, uh, which is a rather small school, about 140 students um, on, um, in, in four years, um, that they have more than um, 38 different nationalities. 
So minority still has the, the national Belgian the, the Belgian national identity. So what is then um, Belgian fashion? And, and I think we, we want to explain it a bit like a, a layered identity, an identity that is constantly shifting. Um, and and that, that's also what makes it interesting. Um, but it, it's a kind of sensibility that, that, that designers that study here or that live here, that work here, take with them along, along their careers. Um, then we, yeah, we also updated our um, um, exhibition um, facilities, our storage facilities. We um, uh, added also um, uh, new facilities for uh, um, our visitors. Eh? So we added a, a museum shop, we added uh, a museum cafe. Uh, what can people find in the museum shop? Well, we did a lot of um, um, collabs with with um, 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 local talent. I think we find it important also to give a platform to to um, local creatives. Um, we had a very nice um, uh, collaboration with uh, Christian Wijnands and um, Redo Papers. They work with um, uh, they make stationery and they work with leftovers of, of um, uh, printing companies. Um, and they um, made um, these beautiful um, booklets with uh, leftover fabrics from um, Christian Wijnands. Um, we did a very nice collaboration for children with um, a Belgian graphic designer, Tom Schamp. Um, we worked, uh, we collaborated with um, Essentiel Antwerp, we collaborated with a young, very young collective, uh, Plus32, um, and so we want to continue that in, 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 in the future. Yeah, um, so I actually have a big question. So I know um, out of the things that are being exhibited in the museum, you have like a whole other collection of things that aren't on display right now. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you decide what things are on display and what do you do with all the other stuff that you have that isn't displayed? Because mm -hmm. I'm sure people want to see it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like history in these walls. Mm -hmm. Well, we yeah we have a, um, a collection of about thirty five thousand objects, so it's impossible to <laughs> to display them, uh, or to, to display all these objects uh, um, at the same time. Um, we've been also working very hard the past three years on the photography of our collection, which I think is also um, um, a very uh, important because presenting objects in an exhibition is one way to, to communicate them to, to, to your audience, but of course there's, uh, we, we've been working hard on the, 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 the digital uh, communication of, of the museum. I think we, we photographed more than 1,500 objects the past um, three years, and so in the forthcoming months and years we will use also these images in, in our storytelling on our, on our uh, website, on our uh, social media. Um, we've um, also, uh, and that's also a new initiative, we are, right now we're in, in the reading room of our library, and we've extended the library with um, our study collection. And the study collection, it's um, um, a new, uh, a rather uh, new collection that we started, uh, I think, in 2012. Uh, it's an addition to the, the museum collection. Um, it's on, um, it's located, the, the collection is, is uh, stored here in the reading room and um, the idea is to um, lower the threshold to objects for our audience. So you can make an appointment um, and you can, you can study the objects up close. Um, you don't need to be a researcher or an academic if you're 15 years old and you always wanted to, to study a corset up close, you can come and make an appointment, you can touch it, you can, um, you can even smell it. Uh, we also have a program um, uh, for special groups um, with the study collection. Um, and because we really believe that if you want to learn about fashion, you need to have access to objects. You cannot learn about fashion just through images and, and, and books and texts. I agree. That's so amazing. I mean, just the fact that students will be able to come mm. here and study the clothing. Yeah. People that are doing research on certain collections can come and see yeah. the clothing in person. Yeah. That's really, really important. Yeah. That that's uh, yeah. I'm I'm very happy with that study collection because it was logistically it was not that that easy to sort of integrate it here in in our library. Uh, but I believe that it really has endless endless possibilities. Also for very specific target groups to work on 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 programs. We for example have a program 
for um, uh, newcomers in Belgium that need to, to learn the language. And we know that, that clothing is, is something universal, that wherever you come from <laughs> in this world, you, you need to be clothed. So um, we have a program for groups that just um, have conversations in order to learn Dutch but through objects um, uh, from our study collection. So, um, yeah, it's a very, very diverse um, program that we set up. Yeah, that's amazing. So, how does the museum plan on helping to promote Belgian fashion as a whole? What do you say from your opinion? Um, how, how we do it? Or yeah, how, how you do it. Well, um, of course, there's, there's an aspect of promotion um, 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 through the things we do, but it's not a first um, sort of goal. Eh? It's, it's we, we, we try to reflect on, on um, um, fashion, not only Belgian fashion, because our, our collection is also broader than, than um, 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 Belgian fashion design. We analyze um, um, uh, what we have in our collection. We analyze uh, fashion, and we try to set up a dialogue also with our with our visitors. Um, if you if you see that as promotion, then it is promotion. But that that's of course I think not the first um, goal of, of a museum to to promote. Um, um, Belgian um, fashion. We tell the story of Belgian fashion through our um, um, collection presentation. Uh, but as, as I said, the collection is more than Belgian fashion design. We also have a beautiful historical collection. We also um, 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 collect um, uh, non, non-Belgian fashion designers. I think we also find it um, important to open up the collection more and more. I think in the 90s, we focused a lot on adding um, uh, Belgian avant-garde fashion um, and, and um, to, to, to complete our collection in, 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 that, um, uh, in that way. Uh, but I think today we find it very important to also open um, our collection to um, also non-Western, non-European, but also non-Western fashion designers in, in order to um, add new perspectives yeah. um, uh, to the collection. Um, I think a, a bigger reason to ask the questions because every museum, if it's a fashion mm-hmm. museum, you're going to talk about fashion generally as broad, fashion's broad. I mean, every country has their own fashion. I think why it's important um, asking the question about Belgian fashion is because this is where the stories are, this is where the information is, this is where the resources are. Mm-hmm. So I think this museum is in the best position mm-hmm. to tell the stories mm-hmm. because I mean if I want to learn about Balenciaga I don't need to come here yeah, yeah, somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but if I want to learn about Belgian designers all the information yep. the stories the people that were involved they're all here yeah um, so that's why that question yeah but I think it, at the same time it's 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 also important to 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 place um, uh, Belgian fashion in a broader in a broader context because that notion of Belgian fashion is is very much shifting and it's it's such a globalized fashion is a globalized um, 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 thing so I think it's it's less less and less relevant to really um, um, put designers in a box like you're a French designer you're a British designer you're you're a Belgian designer and of course there are differences between designers from different cities in different countries and how they are educated and, and um, how, how they, they make and how they communicate um, fashion. But I, I think it's, it's, it's less and, and less relevant to, to claim them because their identities are, are constantly shifting um, because they are also moving from one city yeah. to another <laughs> and a lot of designers that study here or that started their business here at a certain point they also leave Antwerp and they go to Paris they move to London they move to New York um, and also how you deal with that as a, as a museum huh? um, so I think what what is important for Momu is also what or, or what we find important is also to reflect on how uh, on what impact fashion has on our on our society so we focus not only on on the object but also um, we create a context in order to to give insight in, in, in the impact that fashion has. And I think that that's what we tried with um, um, one of our opening exhibitions, Emotion, Fashion in Transition. The idea is to reflect on how, um, uh, on the different um, transformative uh, moments, the different crises, different disruptions of the past three decades, 
um, and how uh, fashion designers have responded um, to these um, um, disruptions and transformations. Um, and we do that, of course, with the selection of um, um, looks, a selection of objects, but also through photography, through art, through video. Um, yeah, and, it's, and the idea is also to set up a, a dialogue with our, with our, um, with our audience. Um, yeah, and I think we, we want to keep on curating in that way. I think what's also new for us is that we tried also to... Um, or maybe that's, that's not new for us. I think we've always been thinking about how to curate fashion because fashion is not made to be displayed in a museum. And I really believe that there are many, many different ways in, yes. in how to curate <laughs> fashion. And, and I think that that's also what makes fashion curating so interesting and so fun so much, yeah, is, is that you, you can constantly think of, of new ways to, to, to curate it. And uh, when we were preparing the exhibition, I think we, we very much felt the need for a sort of physical presence. And of course, you are always um, restricted as a fashion curator because you work with, you cannot work with, with bodies. You work with mannequins, you work with busts, you work with photography. You, you start from a very static um, um, situation. And we were thinking, ah, oh, because of the pandemic, we, 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 uh, we really felt the need to, to um, to, to have this physical presence in, in the exhibition. So we approached the um, opera and ballet in Antwerp and we asked if they wanted to create a performance um, um, for the exhibition. So we started uh, working with uh, performer and director um, Benjamin Abel Merhagen, together with the uh, um, um, exhibition designers uh, of Emotion. And we, we ended up with um, two um, uh, performances, uh, two installations, one at the beginning of the exhibition and one at the end of the exhibition. The, the first installation is on all the time, every day. <clears throat> the, the last installation, the last performance, will be performed uh, about 20 times throughout the exhibition uh, period of, of five months. And that last performance is actually our um, um, take on, on the future of fashion. We, of course, we, we cannot as a museum, predict the future, but we wanted to give a voice to, to the designers, to, to also fashion students, the, the, future, uh, uh, the future generation. And so during the pandemic, we conducted a lot of interviews with designers, with fashion students from eight fashion schools throughout the world. Uh, we've published the interviews um, in, in uh, the publication. But we also gave the interviews to uh, Benjamin and we asked to, to work with quotes of um, um, these interviews and to create a, a performance. And in these interviews we, we um, asked um, students and designers what their hopes, dreams and, and fears for, for the future um, are. Uh, we asked them what um, success means for them. We asked about uh, what, what creativity, what, what collaboration in creativity means um, to them. We asked about um, uh, notions um, uh, like uh, authorship or ownership um, uh, in fashion. We asked questions about the, um, uh, the digital um, uh, evolution in fashion. What is the role of uh, a fashion show? Do you need a, a fashion show in order to create emotion in fashion? What does emotion mean in fashion? <laughs> Do you need emotion? Uh, I think all very important um, um, questions and we really wanted to sort of uh, yeah, have a, have a dialogue with, with um, all these people um, uh, while working in our own homes because <laughs> We also prepared this exhibition sort of in isolation, <laughs> um, um, which was the challenge with, with the curators, with the collection team, not to have the, the, the close collaboration that we normally have when, when preparing an, an exhibition. Um, so I think uh, it was especially also nice in that way to have this, this performance. Uh, and for me, it's, it's a... It's a it's uh, an experiment in how, how, how to curate certain ideas, certain questions, um, um, yeah. Yeah, so a section of the museum has been curated on the aspect of streetwear. 
Mm-hmm. So why did you decide to include that and what do you think is the importance of having that in this museum? In emotion, you mean? Yeah. Um, well, I think it's, it's um, um, in different themes, it's, it's uh, present and, um, and I think it's, it's very interesting because I, I, uh, uh, since our reopening I got a lot of questions <laughs> of um, um, journalists and people about um, um, the focus of, of our collection and the focus of our exhibitions, which in the past has mainly been um, avant-garde fashion. Um, which means that you exclude a, a lot of different segments within um, um, fashion, which in, from a historical point of view is also um, um, quite um, young. Eh? A, a thing like, for example, uh, Pret-à-Porter, ready to wear, came into existence in, in, in the 70s. From a historical point of view, that's quite... But as a museum, you see that a lot of museums sh- make the shift um, quite slowly, <laughs> because you always, um, uh, when, when I started here as a director, I had to work on what previous directors collected before me. But it doesn't mean that you have to keep on questioning the nature of your, of your collection and the relevance of your collection for the, the society you're collecting <laughs> for. Uh, and if, if a collection wants to be a reflection of that society, you need to, to um, integrate um, um, what's happening around you. And uh, that's why I think we, we are also shifting towards streetwear. It's still an on- ongoing um, um, uh, search in how to do that. And um, we do it in the first place within our exhibitions, but the idea is also to, to uh, um, we purchased a number of looks to, to have it, to integrate it also in our, our collection. The same with um, um, designs of, of non-Western designers. We, we try to do it uh, through our exhibitions and then purchase it in order to also add it um, 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 to our collection. Uh, a big challenge is um, uh, also how to do it because you feel that the, the, the expertise of your team is also quite restricted. Uh, we, I, have a, I have a small team and we need to find ways in order to add expertise of these different segments of, of fashion and uh, streetwear is not um, um, a, an expertise of my team so we really have to find um, uh, ways to, to, and, uh, to, to, to bring in that expertise but that's very exciting and we're yeah. really very much working on that on how, how to do it and how to um, yeah, to, to keep the collection relevant. Yeah, what would you say differentiates MoMi from other fashion museums? I think it's, it's maybe our curation. Um, uh, maybe also like in emotion, how we are now looking um, in, in how to curate the impact of fashion on, on, on society and how to, uh, to curate it in, in a way that's appealing, that's um, visually appealing, that's um, triggering people also. Because of course you can explain a lot of, you can do a lot of the storytelling through captions or wall text, but that's not, I think, the, for me, captions and wall text are always the, the last, <laughs> the, 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 um, we, 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 we of course also have captions and wall text, but it's not, I, I want people to, um, um, feel an exhibition first or, or, or in an emotional and a visual way and then um, you bring in um, 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 yeah, texts in yeah. order to, to support your, your story. Um, and I think it's maybe also the experiment. I think we maybe experiment a bit more than, than, than other museums. Um, yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, another question I have to ask is, you've been involved in sort of books mm-hmm. about many different designers, um, especially Belgian designers. Um, how important do you think that is, that you can help tell their stories? Uh, through books or just... Ha- through books. Through, through books. books. Um, that's a good question because... Um, uh, the world changed, of course. Eh? There's, a, there's this shift to, to sort of, uh, uh, there's this digital yeah. <laughs> evolution. Um, and of course, you, I also see what the print run of our, of our books is. Eh? That's, that's nothing, not, not to be compared to, to the, 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 um, 
the reach you have through digital um, communication. Um, a book helps you to do research in depth, um, but I think what we have to do more in, in the future is, is to um, make a, a connection um, um, between the content of our books and our, our, and our digital storytelling. Perfect. And, it's, yeah. it's great you said that because I was going to segue and ask mm. you how is the museum mm. sort of creating like digital content or yeah. video content to sort yeah. of supplement all the information yeah. that you have. Well, we're working very hard and, and we will come out with it in the forthcoming months um, on our digital storytelling of our collection. So the idea is to really, um, because we, we've been discussing with the team a lot about the, the, the pros and cons of putting your database online. We had that in the past and what you see is that nobody really, you don't browse a database for fun. Huh? If you're a researcher or an academic, you, and often the, the images are not really appealing, the, the, the information is quite technical, technical descriptions of the objects. But I think what a lot of, what the majority of people interest is, is, is sort of contextual information about the object. What were the inspiration sources? In, in, in what time was it presented? Uh, did it have a particular impact on, on, on a certain evolution? Um, and um, so it's, it's curating in, in a different way. And yeah. we, we worked hard on that the past um, three years because it's different than making a book, it's different than making an exhibition. It's finding a way that's appealing to a digital audience. But we have um, a treasure of information. We have amazing images for the photography we make ourselves. We have you know, an amaz amazing uh, digital uh, collection. I think we have an archive or a, uh, of, of more than 500,000 digital objects going from videos to, to um, um, photos. Uh, the challenge there is to clear the copyright because we have we store all this material but we don't own the copyright of the majority of the material so we are bit by bit we are clearing the content in order also to 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 be able to put it online that's a huge a huge challenge and I think also a huge um, problem that that museums don't own you know are not allowed to put a lot of our of their digital content uh, online I think we should get exceptions for education for example yeah. um, so we are um, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll come out with um, um, different digital stories um, and I hope to get a lot of feedback because because it's it's really also for us it's new how to curate it in best possible um, way okay so last question I have to ask is if someone was to come to the museum today um, what can they expect to see? Um, well, I think um, um, many different exhibitions. I think our collection presentation is curated in a very different way than our emotion exhibition, in a very different way than our uh, places, places exhibitions. Yeah. We, we didn't discuss that yet, but it's a, an exhibition on um, the origins of lace of, uh, and, and the role that Antwerp as a city played in the creation and the, the the production and, and the trade, the international trade of lace, and we made the link to contemporary fashion, um, um, especially designs that work with technologies like laser cutting or, or 3D um, printing. Um, and it's not only on view in Momu, but also on four different uh, in, in four different uh, venues yeah. in Antwerp. Um, so I think we have a very um, um, diverse um, a program and I hope that it um, inspires people and I hope that it will evoke a, a dialogue that it will, will make people think about fashion and the impact that fashion has on, on our society but it will also um, inspire them in a creative way. Yeah, thank you so much for the interview. This is so much fun. Ah, uh, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs>